This Saturday, supporters from throughout England will be congregating in Brighton for the game against Hartlepool. Hardly a thriller, you'd think. The reason, though, goes under the banner Fans United, a protest aimed at saving Brighton for their supporters. With me now are two people who are heading south at the weekend. Keith Norton, a Baggies fan. Evening, Keith. Evening, Richard. And Mike Burke, who's a Blues supporter. Hi, Mike. Good evening, Richard. Now, uh, uh, you, you wrote to, to BBC Radio WM and Coventry and Warwickshire to, to promote this cause. It's Brighton against Hartlepool on Saturday. It's a weekend with no Premiership fixtures, mm -hmm. and it's Fans United. Now, I mean, the, the two of you explained to me why you've decided to, to come to the aid of the Brighton supporters, really. Well, it started a couple of weeks ago when I was thinking of going to Ipswich Town, and uh, Mike suggested that he couldn't make that game, so we should try another game, and I said I'd like to go and see Brighton before they wound up. Um, Mike's on the internet at home and he looked up the, the Brighton fans pages and they've got a really good concerted uh, appeal going to save their club. And also it's not just about Brighton, it's about the plight of fans as a whole and how they're being taken for granted by the money men in, in football. And presumably the same, same with you Mike? A absolutely. Uh, we're, we're very concerned, Keith and I, as I'm sure many fans are, uh, at uh, the current state of the game in terms of finances and the smaller clubs. Um, I think. Uh, Darlington, uh, Millwall, Bournemouth, uh, as well as Brighton, are all struggling this season. Um, some of those clubs might be out of existence by, by the end of next season, certainly. Um, the point is that we want to support Brighton because, who knows, um, if we just turn our backs on them and allow them to die, um, next year it could be, who knows, a club nearer to home. Um, we would expect the same sort of support in return. Um, it's a, it's a big show of support uh, on the day. Yeah. Um, Brighton's crowds are normally around 5,000. They're hoping for a sellout of 15,000. Um, representatives of all the 92 Football League clubs will be there, supporters from those clubs, um, all wearing their own colours. Yeah. Um, it should be a tremendous day. We, we also know that there'll be fans from Holland and Germany, yeah. um, some of the Scottish from clubs. from Melbourne, mm. um, whether he's a Brighton fan or not, I'm not uh, sure. I mean, th these issues tend to revolve in that if you go back four or five years, you had the disappearance of Aldershot, yeah. also That's of right. Maidstone yeah. United. Yeah. And in the letter that you wrote to us, you also point out that, that locally, <clears> one <throat> or two of our clubs in the West Midlands have skirted to the edge of this. That's right. Yeah, um, I wasn't um, too fully aware of Wolves' problems during the 80s, but you haven't got the media of the internet now, which has broadcast this all over the country. Also, at the time that Wolves were having problems, um, perhaps money wasn't such a huge issue in football as it is now, and maybe one club would suffer financial uh, problems each season. However, nowadays it's the, a regular thing for five or six clubs to struggle each season. Season. Um, Brighton has been particularly badly mismanaged without wanting to go into uh, it in too much detail because I don't know the full facts but what's happened at Brighton is a, a bit of a shame and could be repeated at clubs throughout the country. Yeah, I mean, well, the bottom line is that, that the rich clubs are getting richer, the lucrative television tie-ins now, an awful lot, I mean if you're in the Premiership a club who in the past maybe didn't have an, awful, an enormous amount of spending power, like say the Sky Blues mm -hmm. or maybe Southampton, now by being in the Premiership for a couple of years they're getting enough money in to buy in stronger squads and, and, and just stay there really as much as anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Another aspect that's of some concern to us really is the influx of foreign players. Now I, I'm all for that to, to a point, so there's some very exciting continental players in the Premiership now, um, some real crowd pullers. but. I think it's fair to say that there's also some very mediocre, mediocre players in, in that division. Um, it's, a, it's a cheap option now for some of the clubs. Um, it's a concern that um, a lot of um, smaller clubs aren't being allowed to, if you like, farm through the, uh, the, the talented players and make a profit from that mm -hmm. in the way that was always so traditional. Um, as an example, um, Blues have done very nicely out of the sale of... Um, the, the two centre backs to Coventry. I think we've yeah. made Dacian Breen. Yeah. Dacian Breen. We've made something like four million pounds of profit on that, and and the, the clubs that we got those players from, Cambridge and Peterborough, um, you know, those are the, the next Brightons really. And and if they're gone, then then how do Blues survive? Really, is is almost a point there. It's very easy to say that these uh, these players such as Breen would be spotted anyway. But if you haven't got the professional clubs and the professional coaches there to take them forward from the raw talent they may be as teenagers. Then, that, I mean, are they going to perform <clears throat> as well if they've been at work all day? Do you think it's difficult as well for the fans now to relate to some of the footballers? When you, you see the transfer fees that are paid to, to bring a player like Ravenelli to this country or the money paid for Alan Shearer, you see what they're earning every week. You hear of Ravenelli earning 43000 mm. a week. I mean, how many years would the rest of us have to work <laughs> to get that sort of money? Precisely. Uh, and also the, the, the prices to watch Premiership games uh, with no reductions for kids if you go to an away game. 
it, it's making it very difficult for, for the average football fan like us to relate to yeah it's simply an indication of the way it's going at the moment um, you've got things like replica kits being bought out two or three times a year I know it's then as a matter of choice for people who go to football matches but there are a lot of people who perhaps can't afford to pay whatever it is into Chelsea nowadays 35 40 pounds and it's being priced out of the out of the means of the the normal supporter I think it's important to point out that we're not against the money and the progress that football is making because it is a lot better than the dark days of the 80s. But it's the way it's being structured now so that no money is being filtered down to the lower clubs. It's, it's OK for clubs who have got a large financial base to, to get success, which is how it should be. But they're looking at uh, pulling up the drawbridge so that lower clubs go out of existence and these are the lifeblood of the game. Now, now Colin Chairman sitting at home he's, he's, he owns a premiership club he's, he's quite happy, he's making a lot of money he's probably going to float the team on the stock market and then he'll be an even wealthier man he'd say that uh, these people who maybe can't afford to go to the premiership it's up to the smaller local clubs to attract them and get them through the gates and then they'll be making more money you find nowadays that you've got a lot of people wandering around wearing Manchester United tops and things like that and it's because they're watching it all on Sky TV it's going to get to the stage where the youths and the children of today are so used to watching games on Sky TV that they're not bothered what happens to Albion, Wolves, Birmingham City. They're used to watching Manchester United, watching a successful side on television. So they won't go to local games. It's as simple as that. It could be the beauty of pay-per-view now. They bring in pay-per-view. Mm. Nobody can afford to watch the football on the telly. They'll have to go to the grounds again. That's right. I mean, if Sky TV were to pull out of football tomorrow, I think there'd be an awful lot of clubs in a terrible amount of trouble. Yeah. They wouldn't be able to service the wages bill. Now, Mike, uh, give us some idea, because some people might be interested in this. It, no premiership <clears> pictures this weekend. You might be fed up with watching the Blues because they've now lost as many games as they've won. <laughs> you, you may be fed up with watching Wolves because they're coasting towards promotion. I don't know. How do you feel about it? But uh, Brighton on Saturday, w what are the events there, Mike? What's going on? OK, well, it should be a lot of fun, actually. I mean, Brighton is a very fun place to visit um, at any time, really. Um, we'll start with the night before the event. Um, the The almost well-known indie band Half Man Half Biscuit are playing a uh, charity gig at uh, the Barn Theatre in Southwark, which is near to Hove, uh, with supporting acts. They're, they're Tramia Rovers fans. Uh, uh, um, I think it's like 99% of gargoyles look like Bob Todd. Was that them? That's the one, yeah. Hey, how about that, then? <laughs> uh, there are other song titles that I don't think I can quote at this time of day. <laughs> Probably not, no. no. Right, okay. yeah, yeah. Um, this, this, uh, this place sell, uh, sells real ale, and uh, tickets are pre-bookable. I, I have a number for that. Yeah, okay. Um, that's uh, 01273 597094. That's particularly interesting because the, um, the, the landlord at the, at the Barn Theatre has offered some very, very cheap overnight accommodation there um, in support of the cause. Um, but on the morning of the events, there are several um, events planned uh, to cater for all tastes. There's an, an indoor programme fair uh, at the Brighton Greyhound Stadium with uh, several stalls. Um, so if it's raining, that, that might be a nice place to go. Um, there's going to be five-a-side and penalties competitions. Mm -hmm. um, Keith and I are trying to organise a 500-a-side football <laughs> match on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, the point to make is that there's going to be so many football fans down there and it's going to be more an atmosphere of celebration Absolutely. rather than a bit of a, a wake to watch Brighton go out of existence. You're going to have games springing up left, right and centre and... Uh, I've got a Wolves fan coming down with me, so we'll see if we can get on opposite sides and kick each other. <laughs> <laughs> if you have 500 a side, I'll have even stranger numbers than you do with the Premiership squad system. <laughs> that's, that's right, very much yeah. so. It should be very colourful too, of course. I mean, the, the, the really, we're hoping for fans of more than 100 football clubs to be there, English, Scottish and European. So mm -hmm. it, it really should be a, a, an event to remember. It's certainly unique it, to the best of our knowledge. Um, immediately before the game kicks off, there's going to be a symbolic circling of the ground by by the fans um we're hoping to completely encircle the grand, ground mm -hmm. and hold hands <laughs> and oh. that's uh, oh, it's all very yeah. sweet isn't it uh, <laughs> it's, it's a message we're sending to the fa who we don't think listen to the fans anywhere nearly as much as they should do um well, just to put things in perspective with brighton for anybody who doesn't necessarily know the bottom line in 1983 of course they were in the fa cup final uh, but for a diabolical miss by Gordon <laughs> Smith, they could have been in Europe the following year in the Cup Winners' Cup. Uh, but now they're very close to going down to the conference. They're ten points adrift now, isn't it, of, of Heritage United right. and, and Doncaster down there. 
their experiences at the moment, you would say, were fairly unique. You've got a board who are accused of having profit in mind, certainly with little affinity for the club or the area. You've got a chairman who's so unpopular he can only go to away games where there aren't so many fans that he needs protection from. And as things stand as well, they've got no ground for next season. The Goldstone right. ground is closing. Oh, surprise, surprise, for development. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and at the moment, uh, with Gillingham having turned them down, there's not a lot that they've got to look forward to. Now, the worry that people would have, thinking of 16,000 people congregating on Brighton for a me fairly meaningless fixture against Hartlepool in terms of the league programme, big for Brighton because they need the points, is there's going to be some trouble, surely. There's going to be a, a, a demonstration on the pitch. It's happened before. Well, you've got fans of 92 different league clubs, well, a lot of different league clubs turning up, and as they point out on their uh, internet pages, the, when was the last time you saw a 92-sided battle? It's uh, got the full support or approval of Hove, Brighton and Hove Police and Brighton and Hove Council who both want to see the club stay in, uh, in Brighton. Um, <laughs> well, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> well, we think, we think similar-minded people are going to be the yeah. types of people that attend that particular game. We, we don't anticipate nor expect uh, any yeah, trouble. It's been uh, a peaceful protest from the start, even when they were docked two points for um, invading the pitch at the end of last season. Which, incidentally, was they thought that was going to be the last game ever to be played on the Goldstone yeah. ground, mm -hmm. which... Uh, which or, or, or not to be played. Or, or not to be played. <laughs> yeah, 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 sure, of course. But uh, yeah, celebrity fans are supposedly getting behind it. Danny Baker Indeed. and Chris Evans, moot point whether it'll turn yeah. up. Yeah, <laughs> uh, should be okay. It's not a Friday. <laughs> <laughs> it should be fair enough. Yeah. Um, so I mean, you, you'll be rubbing shoulders with them and just promoting the course. I mean, that's I, right. I wish you have, I wish you every bit of luck. Um, is there, there is a number I think that people can ring if they want more details. Probably. Uh, at the Brighton end as much as anything. Yeah, pr probably the best number to give at this stage would be that of the Brighton ticket office. Um, I, I should say that for, for those interested in attending, that the, the prices are, seats are £10 and for terracing it's £8. Um, if you want a seat, it's best to ring the ticket office because we are hoping for a sellout on the day. Uh, the number for the ticket office is uh, 01273 778 855. And for those that are happy to stand, and I think Keith and I will certainly be standing <laughs> in the uh, singing cop end, then it's uh, admission is pay on the day, so just get there nice and early, hopefully. OK, so the number for the ticket office, 01273 double seven double eight double five i hope you both have a good day thanks um, sure and i hope that that by playing your part you do help keep football in brighton because i think it would be sad to lose anybody off the 92 club map that's right absolutely okay listening to sport at seven with me richard wilford